Next, we're going to move into a scanning demonstration of the foot and ankle. Before we get into the live scan, let's talk for a moment about patient and machine setup in this scenario. You can do the scan either sitting or standing, depending on your preference and how quick a scan you're going to perform. If it's a quick scan and you're just focusing on one area, it may be quicker to do it on the fly, so to speak, in standing. But if you're doing a more comprehensive exam, sitting is usually more comfortable. I prefer to scan with my right hand and have the machine on the left hand side so I can operate it within relatively direct field of view. Alternatively, I can scan with my left hand and have the machine sitting here so I can operate it with my right hand also in direct field of view. The most important thing is that you're comfortable and that you have easy access to your equipment and you're not craning your neck or turning your head to see the machine. I prefer to have the patient with the foot and ankle hanging slightly off the table. This enables me to move the foot and ankle and I have unlimited access and freedom of movement. We're going to begin by looking at the anterior ankle and we'll start with our transducer in the longitudinal plane. Now as we've mentioned before, before I even place the transducer on the patient, I want to get my machine settings as close as possible to what I think are going to be the optimum settings. For the foot and ankle, we're looking at relatively superficial or shallow structures. So we can go with a higher frequency and less penetration or shallower depth. So we have our machine set at about two centimeters of depth. I have my three focal zones and my frequency on this particular transducer is set at 12 megahertz. I can make some fine adjustments as we go along, but this gives me a reasonably rough estimate of where we need to be. To start on the anterior ankle, we want to look first for the anterior talocrural joint, or the joint between the tibia and the talus. And particularly, what we're going to be looking for is the talar dome and the overlying articular cartilage. Some of the landmarks that you can use include the tendon of the tibialis anterior. If you have trouble finding that, ask the patient to dorsiflex their ankle. Go ahead and lift up. And you can easily see or palpate the tendon and drop your transducer right on top of that. And here we see a nice linear longitudinal tibialis anterior tendon across the top. Down below we have the anterior ankle joint with the tibia to the left, the talus to the right, the overlying articular cartilage, which is that hypoechoic stripe across the top of the talus, and a little fat pad over the anterior joint. If there's a joint effusion, that fat pad and capsule will be tented upward and you'll see the anechoic fluid coming up from the joint effusion. I can also do a short axis linear slide to look across that Taylor dome and assess the integrity of the cartilage as well. We can do some dynamic testing by passively flexing the ankle and we can see that Taylor dome move as we flex the ankle. We can also assess for evidence of degenerative change by looking at the thickness of the articular cartilage as well as osteophyte formation on the distal tibia or on the talus itself. From here we can turn our transducer 90 degrees into a short axis view. In our short axis view we're going to be looking again for the integrity of the cartilage across the Taylor dome and we're going to be looking at the tendon structures. We want to try to find the articular surface of the Taylor dome and here we see a nice hyperechoic stripe indicating the cortex of the Taylor dome with the overlying black anechoic stripe of the articular cartilage. Now my fin on my probe is oriented towards my left hand side which is oriented towards the left hand side of the screen. So if I do a long axis linear slide towards the medial side, in this case the left side, I can assess the Taylor dome and cartilage all the way to the medial aspect and then I can scan across to the central portion and then continuing over to the lateral side we can see the cartilage all the way out on the lateral aspect of the talus. 
for our tendons.